Hello and welcome to another episode of Gypsy in the Attic. I am Laura Nicole, your gypsy, not in the attic. I know, you're all disappointed. It's summer. And this is my last interview of the summer before I take a break because there's way too much going on. And so, to wrap things up for the, the spring season, is what we'll call it, we have the effervescent uh, PC Herring. Hello. I don't think anybody has ever described me as effervescent. <laughs> I had to come up with something. I keep saying fabulous. And I, 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 I'm glowing over here. I mean, I mean, you can't really see it because, well, internet. But I'm, 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 I'm glowing over here. I am effervescent. Yes, yes, you are actually a little bit. <laughs> from your laptop. Um, so, PC, thanks so much for joining us. I know it's a bit dark and stormy where you're at. Yeah, as we're recording this, uh, my neck of the woods, which is the Chicagoland area, is um, having fun, severe thunderstorms. And I, uh, I think Thor has his hand in this one, but that's another story for another time. Oh, joy of joys. Yes. Mm. So, yes, oh. yesterday was 90 degrees and humid in, in June, which is a bit high for us in Chicago. So. Yes, uh, in New England, we would agree. Mm -hmm. um, so, we're going to uh, talk to you a little bit about your voice acting experience. And okay. I, for one, happen to know that you have a great book out on audiobooks that is full cast, which we don't see that often anymore. So, tell us a little bit about Cybrosis and that, you, that experience. Cybrosis is a near future cyberpunk. Um, it is, if I had to, if I had to elevator pitch it, in the, um, I would call it Ghost in, um, what would I say? Some combination of Ghost in the Shell meets James Bond meets Minority Report. Um, and our main character, Agent Cyrus, is a, what I call a full conversion cyborg. She is a government agent. And when the mission that she's on at the front of the book, that should be very simple, doesn't go so well. Um, she finds herself not just on the outs with her supervisors back at back at back at the base, but also kind of thrust into a series of conspiracies regarding her and her cybernetic existence. Um, so the book follows her adventures as she basically races against time to unravel these mysteries and save herself before the forces around her close in and destroy her. So with this project, you had the opportunity to be both um, a voice actor, narrator, and you got to direct other voice actors. <laughs> yes. How was that? <laughs> oh, man. Um, you know, it's it's a lot of fun. It's also very nerve-wracking. Um, it, it's fun to hear other people take my words, mostly, you know, obviously through the dialogue, but take my dialogue and put their own spin on it. Um, whether it's where they choose to, and I, I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little technical here, but it, it, whether they choose to, where they choose to inflect the, in the words, where they choose to put in a, the accents in the words or in the sentence, you know, is the emphasis on, you know, what are we doing here versus what are we doing here? Yeah, uh, you know, two completely different takes on the same line. Um, and then throwing it all together, throwing it, no, there was no throwing all this together, <laughs> cutting all of it together and mixing it and blending the, the voices and adding the music and in some cases the sound effects that I put into it um, was so much fun because it's, it, it, it turned into one of these things that, that I, I felt was the final product was, was basically greater than the sum of its components. And... Um, yeah, I, I, there, I do go back and listen every now and then when I'm trying to figure out, well, who did I use for that or where did this happen? And then I just get lost in it again. It's like, oh, that's so cool. I had fun with this. So um, I, had a, I had a really good time putting that process together and, and, pulling, and pulling people from all over the world at that time um, together into this, this crazy ensemble project that turned out I, I loved it. So. And was it difficult to direct yourself as you're going through the narration and going through any character pieces that you had to do? Was it difficult to direct myself? 
That's a good question. I have those sometimes. You know, it comes with it practice and interviewing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't think it was. Um, and and you have to forgive me because the Cybrosis production was um, at, at at the time we're recording was about four years ago. So I'm 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 going into my own personal wayback machine here. Um, you know, it, there there are moments when I get tongue tied over words, as as any narrator, voice actor will, will. But there are certain times when I when I get to a point I've read a section out and I'm like, no, 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 you, you completely screwed that one up. Go back. I mean, for the most part, I knew what I wanted, and in cases where I didn't deliver what I wanted, I knew pretty daggone quickly. Um, so in that sense, I don't think it was difficult to direct myself, but. I'm sure there were moments when I said to my, I, 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 I think I remember at least one or two moments where I was stopping like every sentence because it just wasn't coming out. I kept saying to myself, take a breath, figure this out. You wrote the damn thing. You should be able to speak the damn thing. Well, that's the, uh, the good part about being the writer is that you can change the words. I ran across that last night when I was recording Stonebriar Case Files. I'm like, I wrote this? Wow, I'm glad I didn't publish this yet. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> well, in some cases, I had um, my voice actors changing the words. Um, there was one bit, and I think it was Heather Welliver who, who voiced Cyrus. There was just a line in the book, and she recorded it as I gave it to her about three or four times, and then she kind of said to me, so that's what you wrote, but I think it's going to work better if you try it like this. And she gave me an alternate take on it. And she was right, and it stuck, and it got revised in, and now it's in the um, e-book version of the book as well as the print version of the book if you go to buy it. <laughs> um, so you know that, that was one of the other things I enjoyed with working with the voice actors is because they would um, – because of the way that they approach the lines of – with the way they approach the, the, the role, it was – an interesting way to see how other people took their take on my writing. And that helped inform a little bit of the edits at the last minute. So, mm -hmm. Now, have you recorded for other people's writing where it wasn't I, specifically your voice that you were recording? Um, when, well, it was, I mean, I don't do a lot of voice acting. Um, mostly when it comes to my, when, when it comes to my, my, my vocal voice, what you hear is what you get. Um, in terms of my voice as a writer, absolutely, I've read. Oh, we have a puppy. Yes, the, the gypsy puppy decided she has to be part of the podcast. This is yeah, turning that's, that's... into a thing now. <laughs> um, but uh, but no, um, I did record. What did I record? I recorded a role for uh, Veronica Jaguer's Fear of Thought, mm -hmm. and. Um, in that case, it was it was my 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 vocal voice interpreting her written voice, and that one was a bit different because for the majority of the recording we did um, for that production, I actually had her on Skype in my ear while we were going back and forth because we tried uh, we did the dialogue in real time um, mm -hmm. just to kind of get inflection and kind of get. Um, the back and forth between some of the characters. So she would record her half, I would record my half. We'd hear we'd hear each other, of course, through the Skype connection. Um, that was also a very interesting experience because when we got to points where it wasn't working or where something she was saying was just completely turning my skin on edge with goosebumps, and she has got a really good knack with that, especially when she gets into that, <laughs> especially when she was doing her creepy Ricky Ryan voice. Um, I, I, I had to wait for about three seconds after we finished to basically editorialize, oh, my God, that's so creepy, because I didn't <laughs> want to contaminate our recording. <laughs> um who else have I voiced for? I've done some little bit of voice work, mostly cameo work for some some work uh, for the Space Casey books or audio dramas, excuse me, that Christiana Ellis did, both season one and two. Um, who else? I know there was one or two more. My instrument made an appearance in um, um, in in one of the Metamorph City uh, productions that Chris Lester did, 
-hmm. And I want to say it made an appearance in Down from 10 by Dan Sawyer, but I don't think so. I think I just was, was consulting with him on that. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's different when you're recording for the people because, like you said, it's not your words. And unless you've got that person available to you at the moment you're recording, you've got to give them what they've asked for on the paper um, because that's their words and it's their work. So you've got to... You, you've got to kind of you, you got to respect that. Definitely. Um, yes, Jim. I'm going to. I'm going to ask him that. And stop trying to look at him. <sighs> So, Gypsy Puppy wants to know, what do you do when you're feeling sick and you still have to record? Oh, man. Um, that depends. If I'm feeling sick and I'm just kind of under the weather, tired, and just not feeling 100%, I push through it and record. I mean, if I can, if I can push it off, I sometimes will. But if I'm on deadline and it's got to be done tomorrow, then I've got to do it. Um, it, it's it's just like going to the day job in that sense where you know it's something you don't want to do at least not right now but you got to do it um, but if it's to a point where it's going to affect my voice then I have to sit back and give a, a serious consideration to it if I haven't recorded anything for the production and this is just like a one you know 30 minutes in the studio and it's done then um, I have no problem. I, I have no problem doing it in, in a slightly altered voice, and I'll and I'll send that when I talk to the the producer. I'll say, by the way, I was sick and congested, what have you, and if you don't like it, let me know, and I'll redo it. Um, but if I'm doing something where I've done multiple sessions, where there's a certain consistency in my voice up to this moment, and now I've got you know congestion or what have you, and my voice is completely screwed up, then I'll just email them out and say not going to do it tonight. It will be inconsistent and I'll catch it up as soon as I get better. And I think I might have lost you. Did I lose you? Paging Gypsy Laura. Gypsy Laura, please pick up the white courtesy phone. Oh, there she is.
invite PC back because clearly I failed. So I will make a joke about that in a little bit. Hey, there you are. Woohoo! So, uh, Thor must be on your end and Loki must be on my end. <laughs> I um, think. Sorry about the technical difficulties, folks. It was not intentional, and if I can be smart, I can maybe figure out how to fix it in video. If not, I know I can fix it in audio. <laughs> anyway, let's let's go back to the topic at hand. So you were saying that um, when you're sick and you have to record, you just kind of push through it if you can. Yeah. Um, if if it's if I mean. For for you know there are different levels of sick obviously and there's the sick that affects your voice and then there's the sick that doesn't and when it's the sick that doesn't affect your voice is uh, you know if I can take the night off to rest I will but if I'm on that deadline that it has to be turned in um, then you know like anything else you push through it um, but if it's sick that does affect my voice and it affects my voice in a way that any audio that I have either delivered previously or will deliver in the future will be inconsistent in terms of the tone of my voice to you know to a, I mean if I'm sounding if, well, excuse me if I'm sounding like this and I sound like a you know Batman uh, tonight and then tomorrow I'm gonna sound like this I, I'm, I'm gonna probably contact a producer and and tell them, yeah, you you want me to wait a day, or however long it is, and you know you just go for it from there, um, because I one of the things that I've noticed as a producer of audio, and I've heard it mentioned a few times in your conversations with other people on the show, um, is that level of consistency, and mm -hmm. it's hard enough to get it when you record, you know, uh, you know, in my case it might be a week later. Um, under ideal conditions, whereas when things are less than ideal, it's even harder. So um, for me, it comes down to just mitigating as many variables as I possibly can. See, guys, somebody else listens to my show. It's all <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm composed. I'm professional. Who's blah, blah. <laughs> okay. So now that we've had our little snafu, we get to mm -hmm. my favorite part of the show and everybody else's least favorite part of the show, mm -hmm. um, where I ask you the most difficult question possible. <laughs> and I think I know what's coming, too. You do. But are you prepared? So who would you choose to have as a guest voice, like a dream guest voice in mm. any production that you do in the future. Okay. Let me ask let me let me ask you this. Somebody in our in our podcasting and in and voice acting circles or anybody in the world? Well um, I've had answers from both. Okay. See see the, the, the problem that I have with answering this question is that if I if I leave it on the in our circles um, on our little corner of the interwebs, the answer is so far, everybody who I've ever wanted on one of my productions has been or will be on one of my productions. So, so there's no one I could say would be my dream to get. Um, I mean, I, I could say I'd love to have Veronica Jaguer. I'd love to have you, of course. Um, I've got. Um, I, I may have a role for you in a coming in a coming project, by the way. Um, um, no, so. you don't. you're not allowed. You shut off the computer. <laughs> Um, so, so in terms of you know, in terms of reaching out to the people in the writing and the podcasting community, um, I don't think I've ever had anybody, and I'm very lucky to be able to say this. I don't think. <laughs> yes, Thor, I'll take you too. Um, <laughs> um, never forget the God of Thunder. No, never forget the God of Thunder. Uh, I don't know if that came through on the audio, but there was. It a, did. It totally nice. did. Nice. Um, but no, in terms of the community in our neck of the woods, it's very it's very accessible. Um, but if I had to go out to the to the great beyond of Hollywood and and you know professional voice acting and acting and things like that, oh my God, there's a list a mile long. Um, I would have to say. 
there are two people I would want, and I'd want them to do a scene together. Okay. Sir Patrick Stewart mm -hmm. and Tom Hiddleston. Oh. <laughs> you have just made every geek girl and and metrosexual and <laughs> geek guy uh, have a little bit of an orgasm. You know, I I like a lot of people in in at least in my understanding in the states. I came to know Tom Hiddleston through his role as Loki in the Marvel comic movies, mm -hmm. and. The more I watch him over and over and over and over again, and the more I see that Super Bowl commercial where he's in the helicopter talking about why all the bad guys have British accents, mm -hmm. um, the more and you know the more I see him on YouTube being you know Loki at Comic Con and some of the you know yeah you know it's just like oh my god this guy's awesome. <laughs> Because <laughs> um, he's got that depth of character. He's got, you know, I mean, the Loki character that he does, and he does it so well as a trickster, is he's got such an expression about him. Um, and some of that's visual because he's got that big, wide, toothy smile, and but it's also in the voice. Mm -hmm. Um and then you know Patrick Stewart. I mean, I mean, pick pick your fandom. I mean, Captain Picard. You know, Professor X. How could you not? <laughs> yeah, he's um, he is a classic actor, um, and I I enjoy him in almost everything I've seen him in. I even enjoy him in uh, A Christmas Carol. Yeah, I was just gonna say I really liked him in that one as well. Um, and just it's again, like we know each other or something. I know. Um, no, it's but, it, but especially with with the Christmas Carol is you've got to show a huge. I mean, for for the Scrooge character especially, you've got to show this huge breadth of 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 facets of Scrooge. I mean, you've got his mm -hmm. his miserly ways, then you've got his arrogance, and you've got his in some cases his naivety, and then you've got to hit that hump that scene um, when he's in the graveyard and, he, and he's humbled. Um, and he's 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 afraid, and you've got to hit that. And then you w he wakes up Christmas morning, and you know that you know, scene. And, and, that scene does yes. it for me because he has this like suffocating laughter that he doesn't know what it's his body doesn't know how to react to the <laughs> response. So exactly. It's like, uh, what am I supposed to do here? Yeah, exactly. that was brilliant. <laughs> and and I've seen a lot of productions of A Christmas Carol. Um, I mean, geez, Louise, how many come out? How many new ones come out every 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 season? I know, right? Um, and and I mean, some of them are, are oriented for kids shows, and some of them, others are oriented for you know the adult. But the thing I see is that that Christmas morning scene. It is so easy to overplay it. It is so easy to overplay it in a way that it becomes campy or hokey or, yeah, okay, fine, Scrooge has been redeemed. Okay, moving on. Okay, there's the turkey. All right, now he's going to go to Cratchit's. And, and you're just kind of waiting for it to end because the story is over. But Stewart did it with, with such controlled... Uh, well, well, yeah, with, some, with, 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 with uncontrollable control that mm -hmm. it's just he, he just nails it without going over the top and without being minimalist about it. Mm -hmm. And I just I love the guy. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um yeah. Yeah, I could I, I could imagine that really well. Okay, so we are at that point in the show, sadly. Wow, Where you get to pimp your stuff. I get to pimp my stuff. You get to pimp your stuff. Get to pimp my stuff. Well, as we talked about earlier, I am the author of Cybrosis, a codename Cyrus Conspiracy. It is available on patiobooks.com as a free podcast Ding. download. Ding. It is also technically available from one of my websites. However, that's kind of defunct and will be going away shortly and being replaced with something else. So we're going to keep that to ourselves for the moment. Um, but it's also available in ebook at Amazon, at Barnes & Noble, at Smashwords. Um, which I think means it's also available on iTunes, but I couldn't swear to that. It's available in print from Amazon if you're interested there. 
Um, my website is pcherring.net, which is my author site. Um, in the next couple of probably, probably, hopefully by the end of the summer, I'll be onlining a new site to showcase my studio production work, which um, will, will be where I host the podcasts for all my upcoming fiction, as well as fiction and other works that I do for other people. Um, that URL has been secured, but I'm not ready to announce it yet because it's not live. Um, but when it is live, where will you announce it? Um, I will announce it at pchearing.net. I'll announce it on Facebook. On, uh, you can find me there at PC Herring. You can find me on Twitter at PC Herring. Um, are we noticing a trend here? <laughs> hmm, I don't know. It's a good thing your mother didn't name you Red. Oh, jeez. I know. Because <laughs> then everybody would spell your name wrong. Yeah, no joke. <laughs> um... So, yeah, right now, PCHearing.net is the best place to find me. Um, I, Twitter, Facebook, everything else. Um, my next project, Slip Space Harbinger, is currently in, in audio production right now and will be releasing sometime. I'm not quite sure when. We're still gathering audio and cutting it all together, but um, it will be another full cast project, so I'm very excited about that, too. Exciting. So, so yeah, that's me. Yay! Well, thank you so much for being on the show. I really Not a problem. Have you. Thank you, know, you for having me. I appreciate it. We run it. into each other every year at Balticon, so we this do. is my great chance to actually <laughs> get to know you and get my listeners to get to know you and things like that. And um, I look forward to whatever projects you throw my way because that would be Fun. I I I uh, I appreciate that. I've got a couple of ideas in mind. Like I said, I think Slip Space is pre primarily cast, but there is a character who shows up in the second and third books of the trilogy. That um, yeah, Slip Space is a trilogy um, that I think you might have the voice for. So I think we'll be in touch on something. Maybe that. Oh my. So, and um, oh, yeah. You're not <laughs> you know, and you talk about Balticon, it's, and, and I know we're wrapped up here, but um, that's the fun thing about Balticon, is it's the family reunion you want to go to. Yes. And, and every year you meet more people, new people, people who've been around that you just haven't had a chance to connect with yet, or haven't had the opportunity to connect with, and... Um, you know, this. I mean, last year we, we we bumped into each other a couple of times. This year we bumped into each other just a little bit more, and and it's a little it's, bit it's, more. You were practically following me from the con. Are you claiming I'm stalking you? <laughs> that would only be if it was unwelcome. Oh, okay. Well, that that works then. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, so you know, it's it's nice to be able to take that 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 con interaction and then pull it back when we all disperse back to our respective corners of the globe. So so this no, this was a lot of fun. Have, and you're not that far away. No, but I've got I know people who are further from me than you are. That's true. So but hey, what the heck? Next time you're in Chicago, give me a call. We'll go get some deep dish. Chicago style deep dish rocks. I don't care what you say. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know Kilted Man will attest to that. <laughs> He's a smart, smart man. Yeah. All right, <laughs> well, listeners, thank you so much for watching and or listening to this interview, and expect more to come from Gypsy in the Attic as far as stories go. Um, like I said, I'm going to be taking a vacation from interviews until August when we will have Scott Ziegler. <gasps> Yeah, I know. I actually had to do a formal invitation and everything. I the chicken scissors. <laughs> um, but we've got more coming out with uh, Stonebriar case files, and if I'm lucky, I might get some Absolution remastered for you all. <gasps> so, until next time, I will talk to you all upstairs in the attic. Bye-bye. <laughs>